just going to shut up and let this five-cylinder symphony do the talking for me. We just have 20 minutes of that. not a symphony, it's a machine gun. It's a machine gun being fired through a trombone. Oh boy. Before I get out on the road, I just want to do a quick run through of the changes that have actually been made to the car in order to allow it to operate with this stage two remap. We have the TD5 engine up here in front producing 122 horsepower from stock in the Defender and 136 from stock in the Discovery. But it should now be making around 180 to 190 horsepower thanks to this little box here. This is the ECU or engine control unit. And if the engine is the heart of the car then this is effectively the brain this tells the engine what to do or in this case more importantly how much fuel to inject into it and when to inject that fuel into it and this has been fiddled with by storm tuning to adjust a bunch of parameters which eventually lead to the engine producing more power this is actually the old ecu but it is identical to the new one apart from the new one says storm tuning across the top of it but it is installed inside the car so i didn't want to have to get that out but in order to have that fitted to the car the there are a few things which you need to change first. Firstly, we have the EGR over here, or exhaust gas recirculation, which is a simple device which recirculates dirty exhaust gases around the engine in order to reduce emissions. But by removing it, there are no real disadvantages and we gain a slight performance boost and also improve the long-term health of your engine because you're no longer uh, recirculating these gases around the engine and therefore putting a lot of soot and stuff into your inlet manifold. So that's been removed to allow the engine to breathe a bit more easily. That end attaches to the exhaust manifold, wraps around the front of the engine, and then that attaches over on the other side there. Next thing is the turbo, which although is stock and hasn't physically been altered, we have adjusted the boost pressure by moving this boost actuator here. And that's something that's very easily done, takes a few minutes, you just have to move this boost actuator here up that way to increase the amount of boost that this can produce in accordance with this uh, remap. And then the last thing is the exhaust, which is nothing new for me. You may remember we changed this a long time ago in one of our earliest Tierspec TV videos. This is the old center silencer box, which has been replaced with a straight pipe. So the exhaust is just a straight pipe all the way through with a very small silencer at the back. But by removing that, we gain a slight performance boost by allowing the engine to breathe a little more easily. Um, Re reducing the amount of back pressure from the turbocharger and also getting a slight or a, a much nicer noise out of the exhaust as well as an added bonus. But all of those things have to be changed in order to give it this stage two remap. The last point I want to cover was the main question I had before I had this remap done. And that is if we can have such a profound effect on this car by changing some pretty minor things, then why didn't Land Rover just make it like that from the start? And the answer to that is that when Land Rover designed the TD5 engine, or in fact any of the engines for the Defender, they have to consider a very wide range of users and situations those users might be in, and therefore also build in a very large margin of safety. What I mean by that is that the person who owns this car could just as easily be driving across the Sahara Desert as they could be pottering around their country estate in the UK. And those are two very different situations. On the one hand, you may be in very extreme conditions, very hot, very cold weather, very wet weather. You may be running on very poor quality diesel. You may be going very long periods without servicing the car and so on and so forth. And therefore, the engine has been quite heavily detuned for this worst case scenario. This can also sort of be evidenced in the fact that the car has two oil filters. It has the main one, like any other normal road car, and then it also has a centrifugal one, which is there so that the car can go longer periods without being serviced if necessary. But if you're someone like me, who is going to service the car regularly, give it good quality diesel, repair the car properly, and so on, we can 
boost up the power on the engine quite a bit and still know we're happily within the design capability. Anyway, I think that's enough talking. Let's go and have some fun. Oh boy. So basically, as I like to do with car reviews, I'm gonna break this down into sort of uh, different sections uh, and go through each point, little bullet point, so that I actually have some structure to this because otherwise I will just ramble. And the first thing I wanna talk about is what this is actually like to drive after having had the remap done. Uh, but I don't want to uh, go too crazy into just going on about how good it sounds and how brutal the acceleration is and so on and so forth because although that is so much fun, it is not the only highlight of this remap and the remap does so much more for the car that makes it just usable and better in every way. But, <laughs> but just, it's so much fun to drive, that, that I have to say. first impressions video you can kind of see when I first drove the car I went first second gear I kind of short shifted so I didn't really notice a lot of difference in the acceleration and I was I, I tend to sort of accelerate quite gingerly anyway I mean it's a, it's a defender um, but then when I hit third gear and I put my foot down not even flat to the floor and first of all that growl from the exhaust and then the turbo kicks in and it throws you back in your seat and that is not a sensation you ever expect to feel in a Land Rover Defender. It's just bonkers and it's, although the, the 0-60 to time will obviously be improved, but for me it's not about that as much because I'm always, like I say, a bit gentle with the accelerations, especially after this remap because it's a Defender so the driveline isn't really made to put up with that sort of thing. You can do it if you want, but I just like to be on the, uh, err on the side of caution. But for me, it's the sort of 30 miles an hour to about 60, 70 miles an hour. That acceleration is so quick because the, the turbo lag is just gone. Um, I mean, obviously, you're, never, you're always gonna have a bit of turbo lag, but it just flies. It just absolutely flies. But at the same time, it is completely bipolar in a sense because I mean, I'm in fifth gear now, so I can't go up a, big, up a gear. But in other situations, if I was in lower gear, you know, I could just go up a gear and drive it more sensibly. The car is quieter, um, it is more relaxed. So it's, it's better on both ends of the scale because if I want it to be a hooligan, all I have to do is put my foot down or drop a gear and put my foot down. But if I want to conserve fuel, or just drive sensibly or whatever else, it can do that as well, like I'm driving now. It doesn't feel any different from how it was before the remap. I mean, apart from the fact that it is uh, more capable. So if I do put my foot down, if I need to get away quickly, if I need to overtake or whatever, it will just go. But it's, it's a more relaxed drive because I feel like the car is more capable on the road now. Because you no longer get that sensation you always get with defenders when you're pulling out of a busy junction or whatever or you're trying to get up to speed on the motorway and you're sort of sitting there going come on and it just doesn't go because it's a diesel engine and the turbo lag and so on and so forth but now it is a completely different story and we may even have an opportunity for a little overtake here because we have a tractor just up ahead it seems to be the height of harvesting season at the moment here and i am driving through some twisty country roads. Yep, so I'm stuck behind a tractor now. That's something that really struck me as well with this remap, is that, I mean, I'm a YouTuber, uh, I'm also a petrol head, so I watch a lot of YouTube videos, a lot of car reviews and things like that. Um, I'm, I'm very interested in automotive journalism and so on and so forth, and a lot of a lot of auto, uh, car journalists, when they're reviewing cars and things like that, they will often go on about how, especially with reworked versions of a car, they will often go on about how you can all of a sudden feel now that there's a lot more power under your foot and it's, you know, raring to go on and so on, so on and so forth. And I've never really understood that because without putting your foot down, how can you tell if it's going to go or has more power available or whatever else? But after this remap, I actually understand what they mean because it was like all of a sudden you're 
sitting at the same speed as you were before, before the remap, but all of a sudden you feel like, actually, you, you feel like the car's more comfortable and more relaxed at that point, and has a lot more oomph to go from there on, if that makes sense. It's quite a difficult thing to explain, I get that, because I didn't understand it until I experienced it, but it makes sense in this, in this case. Moving on from that as well, it, it's also much better on the motorway as well. I mean, if you've ever driven a Defender on the motorway, you'll know it's it's a bit of an experience. You know, it's a bit like in Star Wars when the Millennium Falcon is jumping into hyperspace or coming out of light speed or whatever it is. And then they're all kind of sitting there going, uh, punch it, Chewie, and you know, they're all shaking um, themselves to death. And it's the same thing with the Defender. When you get onto the motorway and you floor it, and it, you kind of sit there shaking yourself in the car to death. I mean, with the newer Defenders, with the, the, the new um, Puma engine versions, it's not as bad. But if you go T5 and backwards, they can be a bit of an experience on the motorway. And the same could be said for this at times. And as a result, when I'm on the motorway, I usually drive at 100 kilometers an hour around that, which is about 60 miles an hour. Um, because that's just where the car felt comfortable. Um, and also, if you start going faster, then you would, I found you would genuinely start to use a bit more fuel, uh, car got a lot noisier, more rattly, and so on and so forth. But now, from the motorway driving I've done, I can drive at sort of 110 kilometers and upwards now, and it feels as comfortable as it did when I was back doing 100 kilometers an hour before the remap. The difference is just staggering, but also the fact that it gets to that speed on the getting onto the motorway, it gets to that speed so much quicker. So you're, <laughs> you're no longer panicking about you know the slip road and pulling in and whatever because everyone's t overtaking you. Um, the difference is just profound. And finally, for this kind of section, I want to talk about the noise because although at the end of the day you don't get a remap just to make them your car sound better, but certainly one of the notable benefits of getting a remap done as I mean I haven't done anything to the exhaust I've had the straight pipe on I've deleted the center silencer but I did that what two years ago now so that's nothing new I didn't do anything to the exhaust for this remap and it doesn't have a catalytic uh, a cat or catalytic catalytic converter um, either because it's a 99 model uh, TD5 so it's just a straight through pipe with a very small silencer at the back that's all it is um, but it's it's essentially the same noise as it was before with the straight pipe, except now it's been dialed up to 11. And it's just, it's, it's that top end, I'm just turning now, but I will just give it some, let's say. It's that top end, when you really put your foot down, it growls. It growls and it shouts and it rumbles and it's angry. And I love that. It sounds so mean. Even when you're doing more casual driving, you can still get some of that rumbling. You don't have to be on it all the time to get the noise. It's it's very, very bipolar. It's it's quite it's a weird thing to explain because now I can go up into fifth gear. It's very quiet. It, it's not intrusive whatsoever. In fact it's very similar to how it would be when it was stock, but I can put my foot down and it <laughs> the speedo just climbs like there's no tomorrow. <laughs> oh boy. But like I say, I can just go up a gear if I want. The car relaxes a bit. It's not constantly shouting and angry. It doesn't have to be that way. But I'm 21 years old, I love my cars. I'm sure you can imagine how I'm driving it most of the time. <laughs> oh God. But the weird thing is, despite all this noise and anger and acceleration and so on and so forth, the car should, and um, well, it will be. I mean, this is something I haven't tested, but it is, uh, I have been told by Daniel at Storm Tuning, and I believe him on this because he's been amazing and honest about everything uh, I've chatted to him with so far. And I've also heard it from people, of course, uh, from other people who have had remaps done. Um, and that point is, oh God, it's just so good to drive. That point is that the car will be more economical on fuel now, if, 
if you drive it more sensibly. But like I say, that's why I haven't tested it yet because you know how I've been driving this thing for the past few weeks. <laughs> but I do intend to give it a go. I will at some point fill up the tank and I will say to myself, I'm gonna discipline myself and say, right, for the next week or whatever, I am gonna drive sensibly and see what happens. I'll measure the, uh, the fuel consumption and compare it to what it was. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> It may have a bit more power, but still a bit of a barge in the corners, let's put it that way. Oh boy. But basically, the reason for that uh, improved fuel efficiency um, is that the remap means the engine is more intelligent in the way it uses fuel, along with the fact that I'm no longer revving the nuts off the car to pull out of junctions or get up, it takes a lot less time to, to get up to speed on the motorway, I can use higher gears and so on and so forth. So in theory, you should be getting and a noticeably improved uh, MVG out of your engine as a result. <laughs> Not for me. Not at the moment. Not yet. And then this is the thing. Sleepy little country village here. I'm going to be nice and relaxed so I don't get told off. Not that that's happened before. Don't think you have to have some chavy hooligan thing all of a sudden. It can still be a Defender, and this remap doesn't necessarily mean it's some kind of sports car all of a sudden. Because it will be more usable in day-to-day -day life as a, as a result of the remap. I mean, driving, I've noticed, I, I drive a lot around town. Um, and I've, bloody hell, he was going some. Uh, and I've noticed driving around town, and just, I mean, I, I use this car every day quite a lot. Um, it is, it is a real daily driver for me, and it gets used for everything, for off-roading, for on-roading, on-roading, is that a thing? Yeah, on and off-road, it gets used for towing very heavy objects, it's a workhorse, it's a daily driver, it does motorway miles, it does everything. And it's just better in all of those scenarios. It's for daily driving, for driving into town and back, for commuting, it's more relaxed. It's more capable of overtaking, pulling out of junctions, pulling away from lights. In fact, I had, a, I had a moment earlier today, in fact, where I pulled away from a light and I wasn't, I was just, you know, driving normally. I wasn't, you know, being a hooligan or whatever. I was just driving normally, I pulled away from a set of lights and I looked in my rear view mirror and the car behind me was not up my backside. And if you drive a Defender, you know, you will know that people will often just tailgate you because they are impatient and the Defender is not the best at pulling away quickly. God, these are some fantastic roads here, I must say. This is the first, I'm trying a new route for this video, in fact. And I gotta say, this is a lot of fun. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> this is, a, I'm not, I promise you, I'm not being dramatic for the sake of the video. This is completely genuine. This is just, so much fun! And it's a Defender! <laughs> but at the same time, I could now go into the forest, I could stick it in a mud hole, come out the other side, then go pull a horse box, then drive it into town, then drive across the country on the motorway. <laughs> I could do everything! I mean, it's, like I said, it's not a sports car. I'm not saying that at all. <laughs> but it's but it's, it's fun, and I think I've made that point quite clear. And the amount of torque it has, it just pulls. I mean, you can be at the bottom of a hill and go up a gear and put your foot down and it will just go. It will just pull you up that hill like there's no tomorrow. It is insane. Got another tractor here. Woo! And on, on the point of fun, I suddenly realized uh, about a week or two after I had this remap done, I suddenly realized that I hadn't been listening to music because when I drive, 95% of the time I have music on. But I suddenly realized for like a week I, hadn't, I just hadn't been listening to music while driving and I hadn't noticed this. And I suddenly thought, you know what, I've been enjoying the experience of driving this car and the noise as well so much that I just forgot about putting music on when I got in. Denmark! 
Mark, where have you been hiding these roads? Oh. <laughs> this is a very, very genuine smile, guys, I promise. Oh, man. But it's still a Defender. It's still a Defender. It doesn't look any different. It still has those flaws, which are a pain in the ass sometimes, but make it what it is and give it the character it has. It's still the car you know and love, but it is just, it just makes life easier and puts a smile on your face while you're doing it. And what's wrong with that? What is wrong with that? Tell me. You know, I thought the other day, you know, you get these stickers, you see these stickers on the back of Defenders, which say, uh, you can go fast, I can go anywhere. And I suddenly thought the other day about that, that storm tuning, Daniel, if you're watching, and I know you are, that you need to start producing stickers that say, storm tuning, now I can go fast and anywhere. Because <laughs> that is true. Just gonna do a little turn around here, go back down that road, because that was a lot of fun. And I have no idea where I am. Um, <laughs> but who cares? I'm having way too much fun. In some ways, I wish I could relive that moment of getting the remap done. You know when you have, you, you, you have, we have these memories as humans that we haven't implanted in our minds. And sometimes you think, I wish I could just relive that day or that moment, or the time I met that person or whatever it was. But you know what? I don't want to relive that moment because it still puts a smile on my face in exactly the same way it did on that day. It really does. something else. This is actually the second time I've had to film this video because of some issues I had with the first one and I am a real perfectionist when it comes to these. I want these videos to be as good as they possibly can and I wasn't happy with the first take so I'm doing it again. And I was slightly worried that it wouldn't be as good as the first time around I did it because my enthusiasm wouldn't be there. But no, nope. my enthusiasm is still here. gonna back off for a moment and just uh, be vaguely serious and I just got to say that Daniel uh, who owns Storm Tuning uh, and set this whole thing up in the first place he has been amazing throughout this whole process and he's answered every question I've had and been very honest and been very helpful about sorting out this whole remap and he's been very friendly and so on and so forth and I don't think that's just because I'm now talking to thousands of people and therefore I can say anything about him and so he's being nice just for the sake of that. I don't think that's it because I've spoken to other people who have had remaps done by him and they say he's a fantastic guy, he's very helpful, very honest and so on and so forth. So I just gotta say, Daniel, thank you so much for everything you've done. I know there's still some work to be done with you but I'm very excited for that because we might be doing some more tweaks to this ECU. Because actually, and I'm not talking more power, but actually something else you can do which is really interesting is you can effectively personalize the remap to your needs. So if you're someone who uses your Defender for a lot of towing or a lot of motorway miles, or whatever else, you can adjust the remap for that purpose, so where you need that power. And at the moment, my, my remap is adjusted to have the most of the power on the low end of the rev range. It's fine by me for now, but it might be adjusted in future. We never know. We, it might be something we play with. That's all I'm saying. Oh, oh man. Nissa, if you're watching, you can keep your three extra cylinders, mate. I don't want them. When you go along a wall, you know, somewhere where it can echo or resonate off, that noise is just biblical. It is, oh man. It is the best money you will ever spend on your TD5. And in fact, when I, the first couple days I had this remap, I was almost frustrated, almost angry that all TD5s aren't like this because they they have the, the capability to do that. This this power is in within the parameters of what the engine can do. So why aren't all TD5s like this? I mean, I know everyone has uses it for different purposes. I spoke a bit about that at the start of the video, but the majority of TD5s could quite easily do this. And they need to because this 
because you have to experience this. If you have a TD5, go and talk to Daniel. You know, I was thinking, you know that meme, if any of you know what memes are, of Fry from Futurama holding out a bundle of cash going, shut up and take my money. Shut up and take my money. I just thought of that when I was thinking of, you know, what I was going to say for this video. For some reason that popped into my head. I was just like, shut up and take my money, Daniel. Go, everyone, go and give him your money and get yourselves a remap. You won't regret it. It pays itself back in smiles. Smiles per mile. That's what. Anyway, just back off a lit. A lit? A bit. Can't talk now. Let the car chill out. I mean, it's like 25 to 30 degrees outside. I've just been hooning this car up and down these country roads. And the temperature gauge is, you know, where it was, where it would be normally before the remap, if I was driving it normally. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Oh, I'll tell you what, that's something else I'm going to do very quickly. It's just tell you that, yes, there are plenty more videos coming relating to the remap. And, yes, we will be doing a TD5 versus V8 showdown, the rematch of the rematch in some form or another at some point, hopefully this summer, because, obviously, we need the fields after they're harvested. We need that space to do it in. Um, and there may even be a slight twist to that video depending on how things go. I'm not sure. I'm still putting, th I'm still planning things at the moment. Very big tractor going. Woo. And the other one was fuel economy because I think it would be quite interesting to see whether or not this has an effect on my MPG. And if it does, then perhaps I will do a video, a little update, just informing you guys what my MPG has been like compared to how it was before the remap. Just out of interest, some of you might want to see that. But otherwise, that is it from me, guys. Thank you so much for watching. This has been an absolute blast. I will see you guys in the next video.